Hi, my name is Gerard Season. I'm an artist, and I wrote this book. Welcome to Icons, Windows to the Soul. In this series of videos, I will show you each of my paintings, who they are portraying, and how I made them. But first, a little about me. I am best known as a one-man choir singer and funeral celebrant than perhaps Superman cosplayer. 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 You get the idea. Host. Stage actor. Digital artist. Lesser known as a photographer. Tailor. Shoemaker. Composer. Musical arranger. Sculptor. And writer. And it's only fairly recently that I became known as a painter. I'm quite pleased that it has come to a full circle. Painting was actually one of the first arts I discovered. This book and these videos present my first ever full series of paintings available to the public. Many have asked how a self-taught artist such as myself, in such a short time, was able to complete an entire collection and masterfully execute portraiture at an advanced skill. It may be true that it's my first time ever to paint oil on canvas, but even as a child, I had already been painting religious figures, or more precisely, religious figurines. The family tradition my mom started, which was to put up an annual nativity tableau, inspired me at a young age to first customize crash figurines by repainting them. I customized them because I didn't like the faces of the figurines. Eventually, I would craft them from scratch using various materials like wire, styrofoam, wood, fabric, plaster of Paris, resin, polymer clay, dental stone, and naturally, paint. This was to culminate in my one-man show, The Rosary Theater, in 1997, a 20-minute light and sound show on the life of Jesus. The original version still stands at the entrance of our home. I have been mostly inspired by the Renaissance genius, Leonardo da Vinci. I use his bit of light and dark tonality known as chiaroscuro, and a lot of his soft, somewhat smoky look known as sfumato, his La Gioconda more commonly known as the Mona Lisa, always intrigued me since I was a child. I have also been greatly fascinated by the Renaissance master, Michelangelo Buonarroti, who considered himself first and foremost a sculptor before a painter. As you survey his Sistine Chapel ceiling, you will be amazed that instead of the flat medieval frescoes of old, his giant massive figures have a magnificent sculptural quality to them. For centuries, he was not considered much of a colorist, since his work had been dimmed by layers of soot and animal glues. Some experts claim Michelangelo's own retouches were removed during the controversial restoration last century. Now his colors include pastel yellows, lime greens, and peach tones. An artist within my lifetime, Andy Warhol, composed large portraits of pop icons using psychedelic palettes. His work inspired the large crop composition of my works. These three artists, perhaps, were the greatest influences with regard to the style that is evident in this collection of portraits. But to be known as a painter, not as a young man, I realized that should I even bother with this most hackneyed, most popular, and probably one of the most abused forms of art, I should be renowned both for my artistic skill and on a practical level to be also commercially known in the field. Therefore, there is no room for timidity, apologies, or hesitation. Nearly anyone can haphazardly slap paint into canvas and call it a painting. I decided early on that I wasn't going to be just one of those artists. My art should not only be beautiful, it should also be of great value. My art comes to you so unique, so distinctive, so recognizable, and yet so simple. I mean, when you see a gigantic, cropped, religious portrait with very expressive eyes. Why, that can only be an original. Gerard, why did I choose to paint cropped religious portraits? Well, it's always a good idea to start with something you're generally good at and take it from there. Even as I paint large, cropped portraits for the rest of my life, I could eventually diversify to more worldly and popular subjects. In the meantime, there are thousands of inspiring religious subjects that have to be reintroduced to the world. But why cropped and not the full figures? Well, those have already been done by others, and more importantly, they will not have the same impact. 
The point of every portrait is to draw the viewer to the eyes, and having too much detail, such as a hand, a foot, or an arm, may tempt the viewer to look everywhere else except the eyes. But this way, the message is loud and clear. Look into the eyes. There came a point in nearly every piece I was working on that I stopped staring at the mere painting and was beholding, in fact, a masterpiece. Working on such a gigantic face up close, you can barely see the big picture, and it's only when you step back 10 feet away that you pleasantly discover this. Sometimes returning from a short break, I'd stop when I suddenly see that the painting I'd been working on only a few minutes before now seems to come to life. More often than not, I find myself smiling at it. Other times, my hair stands on end, and occasionally, my eyes well up with tears. When I invited Father Catalino Arevalo of the Society of Jesus, my mother's uncle, to write the foreword for this book and also to view the collection, I mentioned to him that apart from the exhibit, my studio may be the last time these paintings will all be together. His response rather surprised me. He said he wasn't sure he wanted to see them all together. Each one was so powerful when you look into the eyes. Seeing them all together can overwhelm you that you cannot concentrate on just one. But when viewing each one as a standalone, you can literally stare at it for hours as it silently speaks to your soul. Each of my original paintings comes with a personally signed certificate of provenance mounted within its own book, which will make each book one of a kind. It will also be the only one with a matching slipcover to the painting. Whoever owns the original painting must also own the corresponding book. The general edition of this book has no certificate and features a standard slipcover. In this book and videos, I will tell you in my own words exactly who the subjects are and the story on how I made each painting. But why did I make a book and these videos in the first place? One, the collection is quite unique for a first endeavor. Modesty aside, it is an excellent collection of portraits. It would be a shame to limit the portrait's viewership to their respective owners. On another level, since they are indeed religious subjects, these books and these videos will reach and inspire more people than the actual paintings themselves. Two, it wouldn't be far-fetched that centuries from now, some highly imaginative writer could put unlikely motives on my part and even claim that my St. John is, let's say, Mary Magdalene. Many so-called experts sometimes like to put too much meaning on this or that painting. For instance, they can say that the blue part signifies the loneliness of the painter when he was making the painting. But the real reason might simply just be, I like blue. So let me categorically state that if it isn't documented in this book or these videos, then it probably isn't the case. And although I would never consider myself an authority on portraiture, let alone painting, for obvious reasons, I am the utmost authority on my paintings. And three, on a very practical level for both me the artist and the future owners, these book and these videos give each of the paintings provenance and as such increases its monetary value. This book and these videos are rare because not only do they show me the artist with each of the works, I am also photographed working on each one. Art today serves several purposes, one of which is for investment purposes. Each of these paintings is now a published work, and on that merit alone, each is a worthy investment. In your lifetime, you may seldom get to buy a painting that is actually in a book or videos for that matter, let alone one with a backstory told by the artist himself. And as I mentioned before, whoever owns the original painting must also own the corresponding book. I was fortunate to have had the foresight to photograph the progression of each painting by putting my iPhone on a timer app. It also helps that I am articulate enough to tell the story behind each one. I like what American-born artist James Whistler said, an artist is not paid for his labor, but for his vision. One last footnote. I prayed extensively for each of these paintings. I started each session with a prayer by Father Stefano Gobi of the Marian Movement of Priests. Come, Holy Spirit, 
come through the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. I followed with the prayer of grace before meals, the same one that goes, Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which I am about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Indeed, these talents and skills are gifts that I was about to receive. I also pray to the subject of the particular painting that he or she would reveal to me his or her face and use my hand and heart to bring out his or her image. Although many of them had inspirational models, they are not mere copies of the models. The final portraits, I believe, came about through inspirations from the subjects themselves who had been spiritually guiding my hand and heart. And finally, I prayed for the future owner or owners of these works, that at first sight, they would know that the painting was indeed painted for them and that it will continue to touch and inspire them. So, if you should own any of these original paintings, any copies of them, or even this book, or seen these videos, know indeed that you have been included in my prayers right from the very start. In the next episode, we will feature St. Dominic Savio. If you would like a copy of this book, Icons, Windows to the Soul, there are some signed copies on Shopee. Please like this video and subscribe. It only takes a few seconds. And like me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Thank you for watching. This is Gerard Season in Icons, Windows to the Soul. Hope to see you next time.